Hey guys, hey, uh, wanted to shoot a quick video for you guys right quick. Uh, my daughter's with me again. Uh, she's being a little shy right now, don't worry, she will open up. Um, you'll see her in a lot of my videos. I think it's important to involve your kids on just about everything that you do. Um, you are their heroes, and uh, we love them a whole lot. So include your kids on just about everything that you do. Don't ever exclude them. So uh, anyway, so what I want to talk to you guys about today is um, man-made material versus natural material. And by material, I'm, I'm only talking about, you know, the fire-making stuff. Um, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the advantages and the disadvantages of... What, babe? What is that dirt on here? You just wait, and I'll talk about it. But I'm going to talk about the, uh, the advantages and the disadvantages of man-made and natural. Um, before I start talking about all this, uh, let's talk a little bit about what I'm going to use to light the fires and stuff like that. Obviously, our ferrule rod, and I'm just going to use a lighter. Now, a lot of people are under the misconception that you have to have a carbon steel item to spark a ferrule rod, and that is not the case. You can use multiple items to spark a ferrule rod. You can have it in just a minute, babe. Um, you know, for example, obviously, you know, the striker that it comes with, uh, you can use, you know, the spine of a knife, um, you can use a spoon as long as it has a 90 degree angle on it. Now, I say that, I got a little spark off there. There we go. Okay. Uh, you can use, you know, a stone. As long as it has a sharp 90 degree angle on it, you can get sparks off of it. Okay, it does not have to be carbon based steel. Now, with that said, here, hold on to this for daddy. With that said, let's talk about our man made char cloth. And what can I have for this? Nothing, baby. Just hang on to it for a second, okay? Now, everybody knows what char cloth is. If you don't, you know, look it up. Um, if you want to know how to make it, let me know. I'll show you how to make it. It's very simple. Most of you that's watching this video know all too well how to make char cloth, though, so I'm not going to get into that. Now, okay, baby, I'm going to set you right here. Daddy needs to stand up. Okay, can I see this for a second? Okay, now, advantages and disadvantages of char cloth. Uh, number one, the advantage is it takes, you know, embers very, very easily. Disadvantage, you have to have material in order to make char cloth. Uh, you're going to run out or you're going to have to cut your own clothing. Yes, you can have the stone. Okay, now, let's talk about natural materials. Okay, this is pieces of punky wood. You can have this one, honey. Please don't start a fire with it. This is punky wood. Um, if you do not know what punky wood is, again, please, you know, let me know. I will show you a demonstration on what punky wood is. Uh, but most of you guys that are watching this do know what punky wood is. Um, char cloth and punky wood are pretty much one and the same. See the embers in there? Advantage of punky wood? You can find it all over. Okay? Any woodland that you area that you walk into, you're going to be able to find punky wood. It has, in my opinion, the advantage over char cloth because it is readily available, whereas char cloth is not. It is going to be limited. Now, next thing is tinder. Okay? Uh, a lot of people use jute twine, already broke up. Uh, I personally use jute twine like this. Uh, I cut it in pieces and then I uh, actually impregnate it with melted wax. Um, 
just, you know, I melt the wax, dunk it in, it's now waterproof. Um, you know, the advantage to this stuff is it will take, you know, spark very, very easy. Okay, very easy. This stuff, like I said, it is waterproof in order to utilize it. You have to twist it off into three separate pieces, fray it out like so. Not yet, babe. And again, it's just a matter of getting a spark to fall on it. Very, very simple. Now, natural, natural tender. It's just gr dried grass. I put it in my hand, roll it up like so, refine it a little bit. You know, it will break up everything, get a little bit of uh, finer powders, things of that nature. And again, just and there you go. Good job, man. Now, as you can see, advantage disadvantage is yeah, I was able to ignite the jute way faster than I was the dry, uh, you know natural tender. Again, natural tender, again, it's readily available, okay? You do not have to, you know, search all over the place to find it. It is, you know, nature, Mother Nature provides it for you. Next thing is, uh, baby, just a minute. The next thing is, in my, one of my favorite things of all time, uh, it's my version, basically, of the Mini Inferno. Um, there are a couple other people that make these things. They're a little bit different than mine. Um, the first guy, his name is uh, Vietnambo. Look him up on YouTube. Uh, he's got a version of this. The other guy. Light onto my path outdoors. Both those guys have really good channels. Look them up. You can find this on there. The difference is I put an accelerant in mine. These things are 100% waterproof and they burn for you know anywhere between 8 to 10 minutes depending on the weather condition. In order to use these it's just a matter of fluffing up the center. Bam. And that, <laughs> baby, please don't blow it out. That is the reason I use an accelerant, is so that way I can hit it one time and one time only and it ignites. But I'm not going to let this burn. My kid's actually going to try to burn it or blow it out. Natural material, this is what you get after you render pine resin, or pine pitch, pine sap, whatever you want to call it. All the nasty stuff that you get after you render it down is this. Now, I can't get this to take off with a spark. I'm going to have to use, you know, a lighter. But again, this stuff, once it gets to going, burns for a good amount of time and you know works as a great coal extender it also is waterproof another item is another coal extender this is nothing more than a piece of cotton rope now when you cut the cotton rope 
inside the middle you are going to have to have a there is a piece of plastic synthetic that you're going to have to remove if you do not remove it it will not burn it melts and it prevents this basically from, from, from burning properly now this is not my creation um, this is actually Viet Normbos again look him up on YouTube this idea, in my opinion, was really great. Okay, you can blow it out in just a second, babe. These things, again, I cannot light this with a ferro rod, but it takes it a minute. Again, it's impregnated with wax, so it is 100% waterproof. Now, once this thing gets going pretty good, it's it's going. I mean. you can see that it's hard to knock it out. What I think is good about these is the fact that I can, I, Kaylee, wait, I'll let you blow it out in a second. You can use this as a mini torch, you know, if you need to go, you know, into any, anywhere that's dark that you don't have a flashlight or anything like that. This thing burns for probably about five minutes. Uh, you can use all kinds of things or do all kinds of things with this thing. So my opinion, great. Ready? Blow. Now, nature, again, has provided us with something similar. This is nothing more than fatwood. Uh, if you do not know what fatwood is, again, most of you guys know exactly what fatwood is, but if you don't, let me know. I will explain it in detail. Um, these, this fatwood actually came from that gentleman. As well as all my pine sap. Reason being, I live in Kansas. Kansas, uh, we don't have natural pine here. It's all, you know, man, man planted and everything else. And your neighbors hate it when you go and do this to their trees. Now, you can get this to ignite with a ferrule rod if you feather it out, make little feather sticks, things of that nature. Uh, I'm just going to use my lighter, though, if I can keep my daughter from blowing on it and trying to ignite it. Or not ignite it, but extinguish it. Anyway, you can see how easy it burns. Once it really gets to going, once it hits a good part where there's a lot of resin in it, it will really take off. But anyway, that's just a short video on man made materials versus materials that you find in nature and uh, their uses. Um, if you guys like, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it, guys. Thank you.